What if creativity isn't just a spark of inspiration, but a phenomenon as fundamental to reality as gravity or light? What if the same principles that govern the tiniest particles in the universe also shape the birth of our ideas, our art, and our innovations? In the quantum world, particles exist in a strange dance of possibilities, where things can be in multiple states at once, where connections stretch across vast distances in an instant, and where the simple act of observation can change reality itself. It sounds mysterious, almost magical, but it's the way the universe works at its deepest levels. And when we look closely, we find that our minds operate in surprisingly similar ways. Think about those moments when an idea comes out of nowhere, as if it tunneled through a wall you didn't even know was there. Or when you and someone else, worlds apart, stumble upon the same breakthrough at the same time. Or how a single piece of art can hold multiple meanings, waiting for each viewer to discover their own version of the truth. These aren't just coincidences or quirks of the mind. They're reflections of a deeper, more intricate system. Creativity doesn't emerge from a vacuum. It emerges from potential, from unseen connections, from the interplay between chaos and order, between what could be and what is. Today, we'll explore how quantum principles mirror the creative process, not just as metaphors, but as a framework for understanding how we think, create and connect. Because creativity isn't just something we do, it's something we are, woven into the very structure of reality itself. In quantum mechanics, the vacuum isn't really empty. It teems with zero-point energy, a realm where virtual particles constantly appear and vanish. Our subconscious mind works in an eerily similar way. Beneath the surface of our awareness, ideas are bubbling up in a state of potential, waiting to be noticed. We can think of this as a triad of latent concepts, conscious thought and active creation. Latent concepts remain hidden in the unconscious, often formed by memories, dreams or long-forgotten experiences. Conscious thought is the lens through which we begin to notice these ideas and shape them. Active creation is what happens when we bring these once-hidden sparks into tangible form, whether it's a painting, a plan or a new approach to a problem. Much as scientists suspect there's more to the quantum vacuum than meets the eye, there's far more unfolding in our minds than we usually realise. When we meditate, reflect, or simply allow ourselves a moment of daydreaming, we give those latent sparks the opportunity to surface. Sometimes they do so in surprising ways, triggering insights that feel completely new, yet might actually be grounded in our deepest recollections. By honouring this hidden wellspring of possibility, we become more receptive to transformative ideas, and we strengthen that bridge between our unconscious abundance and our conscious, purposeful creativity. One of the most intriguing phenomena in quantum physics is non-locality. The idea that entangled particles can influence each other instantaneously, no matter how far apart they are in space. This defies classical expectations about how signals travel, and it suggests a deep, underlying connectivity woven into the fabric of reality. In the realm of creativity, we often see a parallel in simultaneous breakthroughs. People on opposite sides of the world with no direct communication, conceive strikingly similar inventions or artistic movements at nearly the same time. It's as if ideas themselves exist in a shared field that transcends distance, allowing them to blossom in multiple minds at once. We can model this through a triad of the individual creator, the global network of thinkers, and the shared cultural field. The individual creator is the point of personal insight, where an idea first takes hold in a conscious way. The global network represents the collective of all other creators, thinkers and dreamers. The shared cultural field, much like the quantum field, forms the underlying space in which ideas circulate. When you have a eureka moment, it might resonate with others who are primed to receive a similar spark, whether they live next door or halfway across the planet. This sense of shared potential reminds us that creativity flourishes not just as an isolated process, but as part of a grand tapestry of human invention, discovery and expression. Quantum tunneling describes the phenomenon where a particle manages to slip through an energy barrier that it shouldn't, by classical logic, be able to cross. It's a bit like magic. There's an obstacle in the way, yet somehow the particle appears on the other side. 
Our minds can perform an equivalent trick in the face of creative blocks or problems that seem insoluble. We often tackle obstacles by applying known strategies or brute force. But sometimes the solution comes from a different angle altogether, springing forth in a moment of inspiration that feels like leaping through a wall. We can think of three phases in this tunneling triad. The mental barrier, the intuitive leap, and the breakthrough realisation. The mental barrier is the stubborn problem that logic alone can't seem to budge. The intuitive leap happens when the mind ventures outside its usual ruts, perhaps triggered by a flash of insight or a fresh perspective. The breakthrough realisation is the aha moment when everything clicks into place on the other side. Like quantum tunnelling, this process can seem unpredictable, almost mystical. But once you've experienced that sudden jump in understanding, it changes how you tackle problems in the future. You realise that sometimes you don't need to break down the wall to get through. You can find a way around, or even appear beyond it in a single surprising bound. Superposition in quantum theory allows a particle to exist in multiple states simultaneously, only choosing a definite state upon measurement. Some of the most captivating art and literature operate in a similar space of ambiguity, occupying multiple emotional or interpretive states until the observer engages. Think of a painting whose expression is both serene and unsettling, or a story that can be read as either heartbreakingly tragic or quietly triumphant. The artwork holds all these possibilities at once, it's the viewer who, in contemplating it, selects which aspects resonate most deeply. When describing this dynamic in terms of creativity, a triad emerges. The creator's intention, the artwork's multiple potential meanings, and the viewer's interpretation. The creator's intention offers a guiding vision, but it isn't always fixed. The artwork's potential meanings spread out in superposition, awaiting interaction. The viewer's interpretation acts as the measurement that collapses these possibilities into a personal sense of what the piece means. The beauty of this triadic relationship is that it's never quite the same for any two observers. And in that multiplicity lies the power of art to remain fresh, provocative and relevant across time and cultural shifts. In thermodynamics, entropy measures the degree of disorder in a system. Too little entropy and everything is rigid and predictable. Too much entropy and it's pure chaos with no recognisable structure. Creativity thrives where order and chaos meet, perched right at the edge of uncertainty. If you've ever worked on a group project and felt the initial burst of uncontrolled enthusiasm, you know that energy can be overwhelming. Ideas are flying, tangents abound and it seems like anything could happen. Eventually you need to bring order to the chaos selecting and shaping the best ideas into a coherent outcome. The triad here is the chaotic swirl of ideas, the structuring influence of discipline and the emergent creative product. The chaotic swirl keeps things alive, unpredictable and open to novelty. Discipline holds the process together, making choices about which paths to follow. The emergent product is what occurs when these two forces balance each other. Much like a physical system reaches a point of self-organised criticality, where tiny nudges can lead to profound transformations, the creative process often depends on precisely this interplay. It's that razor's edge that allows genius to flourish. Quantum computers use qubits that can exist in overlapping states, enabling them to evaluate many possibilities all at once. This principle offers a powerful analogy for the way our minds might process creative information in parallel, especially during brainstorming or free association sessions. We don't always move step by step. Sometimes our thoughts jump laterally, weaving together disparate ideas in ways a strictly linear process wouldn't allow. To view this through a triadic lens, imagine the creative mind as simultaneously exploring known solutions, generating new approaches and evaluating their potential. Known solutions anchor us in practical reality. New approaches break free of conventional constraints, and continuous evaluation guides us toward which ideas have the strongest promise. In a single moment, the mind could be comparing an existing method with two or three wild alternatives, much the way a quantum computer explores multiple computational paths. By acknowledging that our creativity might benefit from this parallel processing, we can allow ourselves the freedom to bounce around ideas, test them rapidly, and see which ones resonate before committing to a single direction.
One of the enduring debates in quantum mechanics is when and how a wave function truly collapses into a single outcome. In creativity, there is a similar question about when a work is truly finished. Is it when the creator stops tinkering? Is it when it's unveiled to the world? Or does the piece continue to evolve in meaning as it's observed by new audiences? The triad here involves the act of creation, the iterative refinement, and the sense of final release. The act of creation sparks the initial wave of possibilities, but rarely do we stop after the first draft. Instead, we refine and revise, sometimes moving back and forth between imagining and editing so many times that the work seems in flux. Eventually, we decide it's complete, at least for now, and present it. That moment of final release is akin to choosing a measurement. It collapses the indefinite state of in progress into done, even if the observer, or the audience, might later add new layers of interpretation. The measurement problem in quantum physics reminds us that finality is often subjective. In the creative realm, acknowledging that subjectivity can liberate us from the need for absolute perfection and help us share our work more boldly. If quantum observations affect outcomes, then there's an ethical dimension to what creators choose to observe or emphasize. Every time we set our creative sights on a particular subject or angle, we shape cultural reality in small or large ways. Creativity is never neutral. It can highlight voices, expand horizons or perpetuate biases. Much like the observer in quantum mechanics is part of the measurement, the creator is part of the cultural context they're creating within and contributing to. We can interpret this through a triad of personal perspective, social impact and active responsibility. Our personal perspective is informed by our experiences and beliefs. Our social impact is how our creative choices ripple outward to influence others. And our responsibility is the conscious stance we take in acknowledging that connection. When we decide to depict a particular group in our storytelling, or when we choose to champion an overlooked issue in our art, we're making an observation that affects the broader cultural wave function. Recognizing this can be both humbling and empowering. It reminds us that creativity is a force capable of reshaping norms and fostering empathy, or doing the opposite if wielded without care. Bringing these analogies down to earth, we can imagine a creative workflow designed to take advantage of quantum-like principles. The triad here might be open ideation, mutual influence, and iterative selection. Open ideation corresponds to the superposition phase, where possibilities flourish without immediate judgment. Mutual influence recognizes the entangled nature of collaboration, whether with colleagues, mentors, or even the intangible influence of past creators. Iterative selection becomes the repeated measurement that tests and refines our ideas. In practice, this can look like structured brainstorm sessions where teams hold space for wild ideas before narrowing them down, followed by short cycles of prototyping or rehearsal to see what resonates. Instead of rushing to finalize an idea, creators might remain in a playful, open mindset a bit longer, allowing multiple possibilities to coexist. At the same time, they accept frequent micro-measurements, like quick feedback or mini-reviews, to guide them. This pattern can harness both the chaos of free thinking and the guiding rigors of observation, producing a balance that yields genuinely original and polished outcomes. Storytelling offers the perfect stage to see these principles at work. Non-linear narratives, for instance, can mirror the many worlds interpretation, where a story branches into parallel threads. Think of those moments in a movie or novel where different plot lines unfold simultaneously, each one affecting the other in subtle ways until they converge. The triad of the storyteller, the story's multiple arcs, and the audience's participation underscores how quantum-like this process can be. The storyteller sets the stage, the story arcs represent the superposed realities, and the audience collapses them into personal meaning through interpretation. As stories become more interactive, consider immersive theatre or video games, the audience assumes a greater role as co-observers. Their decisions determine which path is taken, which version of events becomes canon, and which remains a tantalising what-if. This format can amplify creative unpredictability, allowing deeper engagement with the fundamental mysteries of choice and consequence. When we look at storytelling through this lens, 
it becomes clear that creativity is not a static product but an evolving phenomenon, shaped just as much by the audience's presence as by the creator's initial spark. In the end, creativity is less about mastering a process and more about learning to live comfortably in the unknown. Like the particles of the quantum world, our ideas thrive in ambiguity, in that rich space where possibilities haven't yet collapsed into final form. We've seen how creativity can tunnel through barriers, leap across distances and hold multiple meanings at once. But what ties all of this together is not just the science or the psychology, it's the realization that creativity is fundamentally about connection. Connection between the conscious and the unconscious, where latent ideas bubble up from the depths of our minds, waiting for us to notice. Connection between people, where individual sparks resonate in a larger cultural field, leading to discoveries that feel both personal and universal. And connection between order and chaos, where the swirling entropy of raw ideas finds just enough structure to crystallize into something new. But perhaps the most profound connection is the one between potential and choice. In quantum mechanics, a particle exists in many states until it is measured. In creativity, an idea lives in countless forms until we engage with it, until we choose to bring it into the world. And just as a measurement shapes the reality of a particle, our creative choices shape not just what we make, but who we become. So the next time you face a blank page, a stubborn problem or a flash of inspiration that doesn't quite make sense, remember, you're not navigating a static process. You're engaging with a dynamic, unfolding reality, one where your ideas matter. We find the quantum heart reborn dot one where your creativity doesn't just reflect the world, it reshapes it. And in that unfolding, in that beautiful dance between possibility and action, we find the true quantum nature of creativity, endless, entangled and profoundly human.